Golf, just like any other sport, keeps evolving over the years, and every decade comes with new faces set to change the game and break records. While some can only try to break existing records, others have set records yet to be broken, and one such person is referred to as the game's greatest of all time. But people often have some sort of a hard time to decide who's the best between Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods. It could be a little tricky because Woods has won 15 major events despite starting just 86 compared to Jack, who started 164, winning 18. And Woods has been a runner-up seven times as opposed to Jack seven. However, Jack remains the first player to break 270 for four rounds in a major championship. Could Jack Nicklaus be the real GOAT after all? Well, there's only one way to find out. Jack Nicklaus was born in Columbus, Ohio on January 21, 1940. A retired golfer and golf designer, Jack grew up playing the Scioto Country Club, a fantastic facility with an incredibly difficult golf course, which probably put them in very good stead for his goal. Later on, he was a superstar junior golfer. Jack won the U.S. Amateur twice, and in 1960 as an amateur, he finished second second to Arnold Palmer, and it was an interesting change over perhaps that year. That was the last year of Ben Hogan and Hello World from Jack Nicklaus. Well, Jack Nicklaus went on to win pretty much everything, but what he did in the majors is truly exceptional. 154 consecutive majors played, 18 victories, 19 second places, 9 thirds, 53 top 5, 73 top 10. So he absolutely dominated this particular period for 36 years, an incredible run filled with amazing scenes. Nicholas focused on the majors more than anything else, dominating that scene. His best was the best. Nicknamed the Golden Bear, Jack Nicholas is rightfully known to be the best golfer the game has ever seen. Call him the greatest of all times, and you can't be wrong. In terms of his golf swing, he was a pretty powerful man. Very, very strong, lower body, very deliberate technique. Not Lee Trevino homemade swing, but very much given the instruction. He had a routine that he followed. He had a way of hitting that he worked on all the time, so he was very much a coach golfer. So his golf technique, you know, had a real system that it went through. That same routine all the time with that chin working away, keeping that club head outside of his hands. That right arm on top of his left arm, creating that famous flying right elbow. And then from there, using an incredibly powerful low body leg to, first of all, clear him out of the way so he can hit that fade, get a little bit more of a down cock in his wrist so he was able to drive through, and he really created huge power. He hit the ball much further and harder than anyone else. And who can forget those amazing battles that he had? He stood over the golf ball, his knees locked in, his elbows wide, and he was frozen in time. Then suddenly, the motion starts, and slowly, the ball rolls into the cup. Jack Nicklaus was an amazing player who'd never take no for an answer. He just kept pushing, and he kept recording more wins. I like to think the wins fuel his drive, and the more they came, the more he dominated. And the more he dominated, the more he engraved his name in the sands of time. Nicholas is a fantastic champion, and he has dominated at the top of the game for several years. Interestingly, he wrote some fantastic golf books for some of us interested in golf instruction, and he went through all the chipping, pitching, and strategy. You know, Nicholas is a massive strategist, and he played golf almost like a chess match against the golf course. But while Nicholas just wanted to be good at the game and record some wins, the superstar golfer Tiger Woods focused on beating Nicholas's record. That was kind of his goal, and now it's going to be a contest to see if Tiger can actually beat Nicholas's record. But for Nicholas, I think, you know, his best was the best. And when he walked onto the driving range, he knew he was the best. And the big advantage was everyone else knew that he was the best. And that's just how we liked it. Tiger Woods came immediately onto our screens in 1978, just putting against Bob Hope on the Mike Douglas show at just three years old. So Tiger was the star that just exploded quickly and never stopped. So everything you ever see about Tiger Woods, he was the first guy to do it. And it's a record set and record set record broken. So we must get used to that when looking at Tiger Woods' career. However, a stellar junior career ended up with him going to Stanford University as probably the most recruited young athlete on the planet. He would go on in his first year immediately to win the NCAA championship. As a freshman, he would go on to be the low amateur at the Masters and tie 22nd 
at the Open Championship. He already had some exposure through his amateur game. He played several PGA Tour events but never made the cut. Nevertheless, I think he'd gotten used to what he was going to expect and it was an amazing start. His last four tournaments in that first year as a professional were first, third, first, and third. Anyway, now we go to 1997 and the Masters and he shows the world how to play golf. This era started the Tiger Woods legend, and everything he did he just dominated. From a golf coaching point of view, it was very interesting and it consisted of a sort of three distinct chapters. When he was quite a young guy, Tiger was slim, fast, and hadn't really put any muscles on his body yet, and he was going under the guidance of Butch Harmon. So Butch Harmon is dealing with a golf swing, one that was incredibly fast and explosive. Perhaps, you know, be the best athlete to actually ever be playing golf? So Harmon's job was to try to tone that down. If you look at Woods' initial swings, not to be critical, but to say if anything, there was a tendency for the club to get a little bit across the line, a bit pointing to the right of the target at the top of the backswing, perhaps a little bit shot, maybe losing a bit of angle, losing a bit of sequence, and no doubt, he definitely had a push and a bit of a hook in his game. So the Butch Harmon solution to this was a shorter, tighter backswing. So we used to see Tiger Woods practicing all the time, trying to keep that right elbow down to the ground and in front of him during that period. I think it paid off because of the sensational scoring performances during the Butch Harmon era. So Tiger Woods completely dominated. And if we look at his body, he went from a boy's body to a man's body. He got stronger, he got faster, he got more stable. And if you combine the great things that Harmon did, one, keeping that steel shafted short driver in his hands so that Tiger Tiger was playing golf out of the fairway. You combine that with the wedge skills that Harmon taught him with the best putting stroke, or at least the ability to hold the most putts under pressure. It was an unbeatable force. However, at the end of 2003, he moved across to Hank Haney. The Hank Haney period started in 2004 and lasted until 2010. And no doubt, Tiger's body changed massively. It was pretty obvious that Woods went from looking like a strong golfer to a heavily muscled guy. More like an American football player, if you know what I mean. And maybe during that period, which was definitely when these injuries started to appear, that was a strategic mistake. However, with Hank Haney, it was a bit difficult to be convinced with the driver, but certainly with the irons, it just looked fantastic. You know, Tiger was so shallow and so sweeping with the club staying outside of his hands. I mean, very stable and hardly ever hitting the ground. The iron swing combined with the putting, which was still absolutely at its peak, made Tiger virtually impossible to defeat. And in those 23 starts in the Hank Haney period in major tournaments, Tiger would win six of those tournaments and have a strike rate on the PGA Tour of over 30%. What an incredible form, and it stayed that way up until 2010. Who can forget the 2008 US Open, Torrey Pines, where he was attached to winning that US Open when he had real problems with his left knee. However, that will be the end of that particular period. He would have to go and have reconstructive surgery, and he would not continue with Hank Haney. So Tiger Woods went into the third chapter with Sean Foley, and the last sort of real dynamic part of the golf swing we've seen so far. However, I don't see Tiger's competition as good as all of the players. Jack Nicklaus had to contend with every week. This excludes Seve Ballesteros, who Jack had to contend with towards the end of his career. Jack played against legends every day. Tiger still plays against great players every day, and I would say Mickelson will be legendary. But Ernie Els, VJ, Rory, these guys are great players, no doubt, but legends? You should know better. Woods is a legend, but who else of his era comes to mind other than Mickelson? You have to look at the number of majors won between the two, and you'll figure out that Nicholas is the GOAT. In the end, any discussion about the best across generations is a pretty tough conversation to have. True, the game has changed over the years. The game has different equipment and contenders. The best way to measure two players from different generations in the game of golf is to pit them against each other in the number of major wins. And in that category, it's obviously Nicholas, and by a long shot. And with that, it's a wrap. Let us know your thoughts on the real GOAT of the game, Jack Nicholas. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and push the notification bell. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.